What's happening, everybody? Welcome back. Tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? <clears throat> As my voice cracks like a 12-year-old boy. Hey, everybody. So, welcome in, welcome in, welcome, Jonathan Everly. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Now, I figured we'd do this kind of quick little painting, and we'll see how it turns out. It may look pretty cool. It may look awful. I don't know. We're going to have to see when we get there. So, what we're going to do is do a little black and white painting. So, even though I've got all these colors on my palette over here, we're only going to use the black and white. And I've taken my canvas right now and initially covered it in Bob Ross liquid white. So, it looks just like that, right? A little bit of white on the canvas, and that helps. It stays wet, and it helps us slide these big old fat oil paints all over the place, right? Helps them blend together nice and easily. So if we were going to do this crazy, just out of the, off the wall, crazy thing that Josh is going to do, I'm going to take the black because that's the only color that we have. And I'm just going to start going like this. Just drape it down, dragging it down. Who knows? Who knows what it's going to look like? I like this a little bit more. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Oh, oh guys, that's looking kind of neat. That's looking kind of neat, right? We'll leave these long streaks back in here. Very cool, very long, very straight little streaky poos. And we're just gonna mix it like that. Bang, just a little bit down here. Let's add a bit, bit more black to our brush. Who knows, we'll see what it ends up looking like. A little bit of black down there. I want it to be a little darker on the bottom. So we're literally just going up and down. Just literal streaks up and down, that's it. Just like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, get it in there, guys. And you can see that little bar that runs across the canvas. I'll show you a little trick to get rid of that little sucker. Because he's mean, and every so often, it stands out. It just gets into our way, right? So, just like that, up and down, straight across the whole canvas. Bingo, bango. You get a little bit on my easel down there. Bang! Just like that. From the top to the bottom. Boom! Back and forth. Long streaks of black right through there and it may end up looking like some far away little bit of trees by the time we get done with it right It'd be really cool looking so sort of a very up close scene this time and that way we can keep it very dark very close we don't have to have a whole bunch of sky it's sort of like an implied forest into the background right so let me just finish off the edges over here and this one should be pretty quick and it should be pretty fun we're going to use a lot of the liner brush so make sure you got a little liner brush that you like using bit more of our black, just a touch, just a touch. I want to get this darker area down here. Love it to be darker in the bottom, right? Leaving these longer streaks, just like that. And again, I'll show you how to get, the, get rid of that little space, that little bar in the middle. Very cool, very cool. Drag it down, little bits, little bits, little bits. Connect them down here. Very straight, very straight. Just like that. Guys, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Now I'm going to show you how to get rid of that little thing. Right? Put your hand back here behind the canvas where you can push it forward. You can see my finger if we push hard enough. And what we're going to do is go across that area holding the canvas away from that little bar until we can make sure that it's fully blended away. All right? Just like that. Pushing against it from behind. Running our hand across wherever we're in front of. Our hand is also behind like this. So we're going right, pushing towards us as we go back and forth across the canvas. Just like that, you get that bar to go away. Very cool little, simple little technique, right? Very neat, very neat. All right, now let's come in. We're gonna throw in a bunch of trees off in the background. So wash that brush off. And since we're only doing this little black and white painting, it's gonna be fantastic. And it should be pretty quick. I'm figuring we'll probably do the whole thing in about 30 minutes. That's probably what I'm going to try to reach for, about 30 minute painting. Do the whole thing. Our whole background's already prepped and ready to go. Except the one thing we forgot was to do this side. So I got to hop in front of you guys real quick. Just real fast, come back over here, get our bit of dark on the edge. And that way, if it gets purchased, then it doesn't have to be framed. You know what I mean? It's already finished on the sides. Already done. And we'll finish the top, Got that bit up there. Very cool. I don't want to pull at all sideways. I want all the streaks to be long vertical streaks in this one. That way it'll look like some faraway forest back there. Very cool. Very cool. Wash that brush off. And then we're going to come back and start throwing in our trees. So tell me what you're watching from, guys. What did you have for dinner tonight? What did you have for dinner this evening? I want to know. Tell me. 
And when's the last time you painted? Did you just paint today? Was it this weekend? Was it two years ago? When's the last time you painted a picture? I want to know. Let me know in the comments. Now, let's see. For our little faraway trees, why don't we get a small little fan brush, just so we can keep it nice and, and skinny. We'll just call it skinny, nice and skinny. All right now, since we're only using our black and white, and we have a black and white background here, we have to make sure it stands out away and also create depth by going very faded in the distance and then darker as we come forward. So let's mix up a bit of white onto the brush and a bit of our black. Bring it back over here into the white section just so we can tell just how dark it's getting, right? And remember, it needs to be a bit darker because as soon as it goes up and touches that canvas, it's gonna start mixing in with all that liquid white that's still on the canvas. It stays wet forever. Allows us to dry, uh, allows the painting to slide around and mix and move and be very cool. Now, let's come back here and when we test it against this color, see how it looks darker on the brush? But I bet you it's gonna be very similar when we go back here. So let's just put in a few, just a few little guys, just all right, just like that. Soft little bits, just have them fade off into nothing, right? Into nothing at the bottom. We may not even be able to see the bottom of this painting, which is gonna be really cool. Just like that. Now, don't need to get too crazy. Maybe we have another one back in here. And the further we go down, the more we push in, right? And then we just let the brush kind of fall off, pull away, so we're not really pushing hard on the canvas. A bit more of our black, trying to match that same color with the white and the black, that gray mix. And maybe we got a guy off in this direction over here. Harder as you go down, then we just let it fade into nothing. All right, doesn't have to match with anything. Boom, just like that. Now we're gonna come in with our little brush, our little liner brush. And I like using, <clears throat> I like using these. They're called Jerry Q Artist Liner Brushes. They're, they're neat, they're not too expensive, and they come in a wide array of sizes. So I like grabbing the little ones, and we're probably gonna use a bigger one as well. Right, I'll show you just the two different sizes that we got right here. The size of the bristles. Look at the difference on those guys right there, right? So one of them's gonna be for our bigger branches, one's gonna be for smaller branches. Now let's go into our odorless mineral spirits because you have to have some odorless mineral spirits on your brush. It's very runny. Watch, it's gonna try to drip down all that color. It's gonna drip and fall like ink or water. All right, now we're gonna come back here. We're gonna come in and touch. Start making our little branches, right? It's gonna instantly wanna blend in with the, the color that's back there. So you have to have it be very wet. And very wet paint is gonna come off the brush easily. It's gonna slide across all that other paint. All right, gonna come back in here. A little bit off that side. Maybe he's got another little branchy guy in here. And then again, we can, all, we can go back through and run this thing so it's all the same kind of uh, color. It's just a very far away little faded tree back there. Maybe this guy comes in like this, crisscrosses in front. Just like a lightning bolt. Right? It doesn't have to be crazily bright. You don't want it to be too big. Right? It doesn't have to grow too long. This guy's a bit taller. He's a bit older tree. Right? So he's got a little bit more longer branch. He's a little thicker. Maybe this guy crisscrosses in front of that guy. Who knows? Way off in the distance, right? Just like that. Let's put another little guy in here. Throw some guys down over there. And the more you spin the brush and twist it, you got to have a fair enough amount of paint on there, though. Otherwise, it's not going to come off, right? Not going to come off the brush. So, pop it in back down here, maybe we come through and we cut across that guy. Or we cut over here, who knows? Little things off in the distance. Very neat, a couple more onto this guy over here. Just like that, a little bit, we'll crisscross, we'll go over here, we'll go over there. A couple little pieces, nice and quick. All right, they don't have to be the most crazily detailed trees you've ever done. All right, a couple little branches, these guys are off in the distance. There's not a whole lot to do on them. Remember, you can buy this painting if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com or just go to paintwithjosh.com and then you'll be able to see all the places that we're at, right? All the links that we're where we are are on paintwithjosh.com. So if you want to find me on YouTube, go to paintwithjosh.com. If you want to find me on Etsy or Facebook or Instagram, go to paintwithjosh.com. Head over there. It's got all the stuff you ever need over at paintwithjosh.com. It's got my my uh, Amazon affiliate store, all that stuff. Look at those cool little trees back there, guys. Very neat. All right, now I'm gonna take that same little brush, we're gonna run it back through that little bit of color, just so we have a little sharp tip to it. And then we're gonna drag it through the center again, dragging all those branches, except for some of them that I want kind of left in the front. 
pushing it through, letting it fall off into nothing back there. So I kind of cleaned up that whole area, just down like that, dragging it, dragging it, leave that guy in the front, drag over here, there you go. Very cool, nice and clean little tree. Now, let's come back, do it again, right? That's, that's what, since we only have the two colors, our black and white, that's all we're really using is the black and white, even though we've got all these other colors on the palette, just the black and white for today. Now, let's come back over here and make these same sort of trees. Let's just do two of them though over on this side. All right, just shh, right? Let them fall off into nothing. Nothing, guys, it just has to be light down around the bottom. I just want it to be like an impressionistic forest. Nothing too crazy, all right? They don't have to be too big. They don't even have to go all the way to the bottom. And I'm telling you, it's gonna look really cool, especially when we put our two big ones in the front. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Now, since we've dried up our little section of our liquid, our odorless mineral spirits, which would spill down if it was wet enough, we need to go back and make that area wet again. Now, let me show you how I do it. Since I'm always doing it off screen, I guess I show you how. <laughs> It's just sort of difficult to do all at the same time. So all I'm doing is taking my liner brush, I'm dipping it into my thinner and watch what comes out. See that couple little drips, like two drips. So what you have to do is go back and forth into your, your thing, out onto your palette, drop the drip back in, drop it back in, drop a drip onto your palette, right? So it's hard to do that on screen since I only have two hands, but that's what I'm doing over here. I'm taking out a little bit, kind of like scooping it out like a dog's tongue, right? I'm scooping it out, dropping it on the palette, Right, my little colored area. And that way, watch this, I'll show you the difference. See, it'll start leaking down. Well, it's sort of clear, but watch, let's make it a little bit darker. It'll start leaking down like that. And all of that odorless mineral spirits are gonna be our branches. And if you don't have it wet enough, it's not gonna come off. So, a couple little guys. Remember, it doesn't need to be crazy. Go back, load your brush up again. Don't try to force it and get too many branches going at once. Because then it's kind of hard to go back and fill them in and do different things. All right, little bits, go back, load up the brush, come back in, little bouncies, right? Nothing too crazy. This will be a really easy, really fun little painting for a beginner because you're not really doing too much sky. All you're really doing is having a whole lot of fun with these branches, right? That's really it. And you only need two colors. Just two little old colors is all we need. All right, coming in there, maybe we got a guy off here, crisscrossing over the edge. Maybe there's a guy up top just reaching this guy over there, maybe there's a guy, boop, just poke straight out. Those are the guys that always poke me in the forest. I hate that branch. You're walking by and it's like, bink, catch you right in the shoulder. Oh, those are my, my least favorite branches. Okay, now let's take our little our fan brush again and come down very light pressure. Just deciding, maybe we stop, we hop over a branch, come through, come through that guy, come through that guy, come through that guy. Just let it fall off into nothing. Remember, it's kind of impressionistic down here at the bottom. Impressionistic forest doesn't even have to match. They don't all have to be the same because these are just the background guys anyway, right? Nothing crazy. Nothing too crazy, crazy. Now, it's time to get crazy. Okay, let's get a lot of our darker color. Okay, first we're going to clean up this whole mess because we don't need all that light mix in there now. We want these guys to be a bit darker, in which case they're going to stand out as much closer. So let's go and we're going to scrape up all that light gray color, the bit of the white and black that we've already mixed up and messed around with. All that gross wet paint, super sloppy, right? This nice gorgeous paint, that gross wet paint, ew, nasty. There we go. All right, scrape up that mess, and then we're gonna wipe it off even, because that, that thinner is very wet, just a very wet little bit. So let's come in here, we're gonna wipe this guy off just like this. Coming in, clearing up our whole little mess that we just made, like we're just fresh, we're just gonna start a whole brand new painting. Bang, just like that, right? Now we're gonna come in with a much deeper, darker color. So let's wash off this brush. It's got that lighter bit on there with our black and white we've already used. And let's switch to a much bigger fan brush. If we switch to a bigger brush, we'll be able to make much bigger trunks, bigger branches, all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> so much larger fan brush. This is one of those Gak Doctor fan brushes that I use and it's a size 14. It's the biggest one you can get. I love these brushes. They're fantastic little brushes. Now let's come into our black. Straight up, straight up, just straight up midnight black from Bob Ross. That's the color. Midnight black, had it on his palette for every painting, right? We're gonna come in here and our, our bigger trees, man, they're just, they, they give me just anxiety because they're just so ginormous. Come in here like this. 
right? The more we go down, the more we push and push and push, extending the branches, extending the trunk, bringing it down. Boom. That whole big old guy that's going to stand out in front, right? Now we lost most of the paint off of our, off of our brush as we start mixing with all that white. So we got to come back and load it up again, drag it through all the way down through the bottom. See how we're going off the, the easel? We're even getting the knob dirty. Don't get the knob dirty, Josh. Someone's not going to be able to touch it. Straight down like that, all the way from the top. A little bit thinner at the top, a little bit thicker at the bottom. And all we're doing is lightly pushing up here. And then the more we go down, the thicker and harder we're pushing against the canvas to make it a thicker bit. It spreads out the branch, uh, bristles, which spreads out the trunk of our tree. And again, you want to keep it nice and dark. And that way it'll stand out as in the front. Very cool. Very easy little thing to do. All right. Should be a very little easy painting for a beginner to do. So I should have done a tutorial for this. I'm an idiot, but it's okay. Let's come back in here. Not trying to cover up all those little branches, but come in here, push a little bit harder on this guy at the top. So we got more trunk. So you can see he's a little bit thicker up there than he is on this other guy, his other little friend, right? And we're going to come down. We've got to go back, load it up again, just because we start to lose that darkness, right? Flip the brush over, push it hard against the thing. Look at those bristles bend the whole thing, right? Come back in. Darken it up. Dark, 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 dark. It's, it's constantly mixing in with that liquid white that's on the canvas, right? All the white paint that's back there, it's all wet and slippery. It's constantly mixing with that stuff. So you got to put on a few little layers, right? Just like that. Whip it down, whip it out. Very cool. And shows these are much closer in the front, as you can see. Now let's go wash off that brush just real fast. Just real fast. And then we'll come in and start to just launch some gigantic branches at this sucker. Just humongous branches. So we're gonna need a lot of our odorless mineral spirits into a little pile on our easel. And I'm gonna try, maybe I could do it like that and show you at the same time. It might, it, I might drop my easel though. Let me see if this will work. If we could put this, like, no, there's no way it's gonna hold itself up. No way. Right? Not even like that. It's just not going to work. So we hold it like this and we're not going to be able to see it. All right. In any, in any case, I'm going to take the thinner and I'm going to drop it in a little pile right here into our dark paint, right? I'm going to create this little pile of wet, super wet thinner right there. Okay. That's what we're going to do. So while I'm over here doing that, you're going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And we're going to have a grand old time painting all these gigantic branches. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, as you can see, the brush is literally dripping onto this thing right here. It's created this much more wet, sloppy bit of paint, a little pile of paint right here compared to its thick counterpart, right? Now we're going to take this guy and let's just see. We'll just come off the top. We'll come up like this. Look at how much thicker those branches are just because we're using a much thicker brush. But we're also using more paint and more paint thinner to get that paint to come off of those, the, the brush easily, right? So it's going to go fast. We're going to have to go back to the thinner brush and get some more, my, is my thought. And then streak right through there, right? And we'll come back in, start to shape this guy. Got to be a little bit thicker as it comes down to its trunk, right? Remember, we want these branches to be big, in which case we're going to go much further than they actually are. We're just kind of prepping it with our bigger brush, and then we'll go in with the smaller brush. All right, take this guy. Maybe he's got a bit that comes off over here, a big old chunky bit of branch, and then we'll have him extend a little bit further. Very cool. Very cool. All right, maybe there's a little guy off the bottom. All these little things start happening down here. Our crazy little tree branches, right? So you can tell. It's not running down anymore. We need to go back and get more of our thinner out of the jar and onto our little pile. Remember, you can go get this painting if you want to buy it. It's totally fine. You can get it at paintwithjosh.etsy.com and search for number 875. That's this painting, 875. I'll crisscross in front of that guy. All right, take our brush over here. You gotta forget about all those little trees and everything back behind. You gotta forget. Forget it's even back there. Otherwise, you're gonna be not wanting to cross over it with your branches, right? 
And that's no fun. You don't want to not put a branch somewhere just because you got a cool looking bit of branch back there behind it, right? You gotta forget that they're back there. Come in, put in your gigantic branches. All right, maybe this guy came down like this. Start to crisscross down the other way, right? Don't all have to be in the same direction, that's for sure. Come down like that, twisting it off, and all sorts of little things. Then we'll go back and make them a little bit longer, a little bit more sharp towards the end. But we're gonna need a smaller brush for that. So let's go back to our little smaller liner brush and a lot more of that odorless mineral spirits back into the pile of paint that we're using for our branches, right? So now we're back in here. It's very, I have to hold it flat because it's so wet right here. There's so much in it. And then we can go back, we can connect to the end of these guys and get nice and sharp, crazy, right? Start adding little bits, little bits of branches, little longer bits that stick off of this guy that come out to a sharper end because we're using a much smaller brush. You know what I mean? Little guys, little guys. You got one off of that guy, and over here, it's a little bit longer. Maybe he's got one that trails off over there, right? All different, all up to you where you put yours. Doesn't matter to me where yours go, right? It's all up to you. Where are you gonna place them? Where do your branches live? How far do they climb out? How far do they stretch out beyond all those other branches behind them, right? Are some of them kind of intertangled? Are they intertwined? Do they go on forever? What happens in your mind for your little branches, right? That's all that matters. So, paintwithjosh.etsy.com, you can get this painting, or if you just go to paintwithjosh.com, there's a link to the Etsy store where you can find it. But once you're inside the Etsy store, search for number 875, and that'll be this painting. Oh yeah. Oh, a little tangly little branch. I like that, this guy needs to be a bit bigger though. Just head it off out into the distance. And wherever it's bigger, it's gotta be bigger on its trunk. Right, where it attaches to the, the uh, trunk of the tree, you gotta make it fatter. Just like that. And that guy go off. Lots of little differences in this. Maybe he cuts in front of there. Maybe it goes off behind. Maybe that guy's got a little branch, a little branch off of here. And then he just continues on and on and on and on. All up to us. What do we want it to look like? Up to you. All right, where do your branches live? I always say that it doesn't matter about my painting it really doesn't this is number 875 if you didn't hear from earlier 875 that's a lot of paintings guys when you really think about how many paintings that is that's a lot of freaking paintings so 875 it doesn't matter what mine looks like we're only here to worry about what yours looks like how is yours acting right because it might look similar to this and then you might change it just a bit very cool I like that. This guy up here needs a couple more these little guys. Little streaks, little further branches. Right, little branch off to the side. Maybe he's off the back. Maybe he's got another guy up here. It looks kind of lonely. He needs a friend. He needs a friend. Everybody needs a friend. That's what Bob always used to say. Just like that. Wicked cool. Little things, little spikes, little things. Ah, That's a cool painting, guys. I really like that. So, what we're going to do is put this one, let's see, it reached all the way down from my mall stick, it fell over. So I think I'm gonna put the old family way up here for this guy. Way off, very faint. Flying through the scene, about to fly through this forest anyway. Underneath the canopy. It's a very cool little painting, I like that so much. So, remember guys, you can go get this one, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. I think it's 237 in the store, or you can get it with a frame. Totally up to you, you can get it framed or unframed and uh, it's gonna be fantastic. So, told you this was gonna be a quick little show. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in, for watching, for hanging out, and let's start to come up with a name. What are we thinking about for names for this painting? What would you name it if it was yours? What would you call it if this was your little black and white painting? All right? Ah, it's freaking wicked cool. I like that. I like it a lot. Oh, thank you guys for watching. Let's see. Let's see, said the blind man. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Dang, just 
just like that. Change a couple little things here and there just by pulling straight down, blending it in. Where do you want your little branches to come from? Right, how far in the tree, right? Some of them look good coming out the middle of the, of the trunk. Some you can take all the way to the edge. It's like they're off the backside of the tree. You can do little different things. Little differences. Where do your guys line up? All up to you. Very cool. Oh, I like that. That's a freaking neat one, Josh. That's a cool one. That is a cool one. I'm gonna make the bottom of my trunks a little darker down here. Just a bit more paint on the brush is all. There we go. Gorgeous. Okay, right on, guys. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in, for watching, for hanging out, for being a part of the Paint with Josh experience. <laughs> the Paint with Josh experience. What do we got for names for this old guy? What do we got for names? You know what I might want to do? I might want to. Who knows? Who knows? What, what, what might it look like? Just what might it look like if we were to do just a bit of this? Because we can always take it away if we don't like it, right? Oh, we look like, oh, guys. Oh, guys. That is looking pretty neat, right? Like a little birch tree. Just by taking our white paint, with literal titanium white on the edge of the knife, and scraping over at it, right? Very lightly, like you do on a mountain. So softly that you'll leave little sideways streaks just like that. Did you think we were done? Did you honestly think we were done? You thought we were done, don't lie. You thought we were done. Dang, just like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be the whole trunk of the tree, remember? Take our little knife, just very lightly, swipe it over, and again, what I just say does not have to be perfect at all. You don't want it to be, right? If it's perfect, it's imperfect in my eyes. Oh, woo! That's a cool looking little tree, guys. That's a cool looking little tree. Remember, we're trying to leave a little dark separator along the edge of both sides. It helps make your tree look round, right? And at places where it's too bright, kind of scrape it up. Drop it down in a different place. Right? All depends what you want yours to look like. I, mean, I must say that like 37 times per stream. What do you think, Bailey? Huh? Don't I say that a lot? I mean, what do you want yours to look like? Yeah. I say that a lot. Yeah, even my daughter says I say it too much. Very cool. Oh, man. Just really, this highlight is what makes your tree stand out as being in the front, because all the other trees are not high lit, right? They're sort of faded off in the distance. And so by taking our bit of our knife, just touching, going up, look at that, guys. All those differences in the color, you get your grays, you get your whites, you get your blacks, all together on the knife, all at the same time, creating this little barky textury feel throughout the whole thing. Very cool. So, come up with a name for this one, guys. What do you want to call it? And we're about to be done. Let's take maybe a bit. Let's take a bit on the small edge of the knife, and we'll come out here. Let's see if we can't get any bit of it to sort of stick on to our thicker part of our branches. I kind of touch it and pull it away. Little taps. Maybe we need a bit of liquid white in with that mix. Who knows? It's all about testing it out and trying, right? If it's not sticking, maybe we need a little bit of liquid white to help it attach itself onto the tree branch. Oh yeah. All right, you've got a little liquid white in there. You can have them stand apart from each other. Again, they don't need to be perfect. It doesn't have to be all white. It doesn't have to be all black. I want it to be a little different everywhere. Everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Gorgeous. A couple little pieces, guys, is all you need. Little bits here, little bit there. Maybe some on the top of this guy. Just a little touch. A little touch. All you need. Doesn't even have to go all the way to the end. 
honestly. Like you don't, you don't even have to try to do this part because a lot of the times towards the end, so we're going to start making all those little mushy mistakes, right? Not getting sad about it. Just making a little too much of a mush, a little mushy mistake, a little mushy action, touch in, especially because we have so such little amount of paint on the brush in such a small area that we're not trying to completely cover in darkness, right? trying to leave some of it dark and trying to expose some of it as the light side as well. Just tapping in, trying to make about half of the, sh the thing white, about half of it dark all throughout though, right? It doesn't have to be half and half. You get a lit a bit here, over here, over there, just so it's sort of, you know, about 50-50-ish, but not split right down the middle because then that doesn't look realistic. Right down the middle, no one's going to believe that, right? It's all over the place. Some white, some dark, right? Right? How many times do I say right? I must say right about a thousand times during a stream, I would imagine. Somebody should probably, that, should, that would be a fun contest to see who could keep track of how many times I say right, and then whether or not there'd be an over under on how many times Josh is gonna say right during the show tonight. And these rights don't count, you cheaters. It's only when I say it legit. Like, right? Right, guys? little taps, just making it a little bit brighter on certain branches, not making it perfectly white, just a bit brighter. That's all we need. And the small side of the knife takes a few little dabs every so often because we're using such a small area. Now, why don't we switch to the large side of the knife for this guy up here? Just little teeny tiny taps, doesn't have to be perfect, remember. Little bits off the side, a little bit back in there. The top of that guy, need a bit more paint onto the knife. Boop, little touch, little touch here, little touch there. All depends on your painting. What do you want yours to look like? Because I must say it 75 times. 75 times a stream. What do you want yours to look like, guys? Very cool. Ah, so much better. All right, just having that little bit of highlight right out there in the front. Just wicked cool. Foggy December, I like that. That's a cool title. It's so it's so freaking bright in the camera too. It's much darker. Like look at this. It's much darker on the uh, in the actual TV than it is in this bright light. It just overexposes everything. So all the black looks gray. <laughs> I don't understand. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Laid bare. I like that. I like that. That's wicked. Branch out with me. I like that. La Loca. Bear trees. Dig it. The Mist. Ooh, Anna. Anna with the Mist. Woods of Whispers by Kayla Phelps. I like that. Do you know she's uh, related to Michael Phelps? Oh, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if it's true. It'd be cool. It'd be cool. Remembering Mom and Dad. I dig that. Old Friends. Oh, that's it. That's the title. That's the title. Connor. Connor, you're a genius. Pin this comment right here. Old Friends. Let's see. Can we I want to follow Connor? There we go. Let me give Connor a follow. So I dig that title. Old friends, right? Go, go, everybody go follow Connor. And then we're going to spin this sucker around and sign it. Old friends. Dig that. Way cool. All right. Put this guy back over here. 875. Old friends. Cool. Now this one's painted on 723 of 23, and we're all gonna go to paintwithjosh.com in order to find my live schedule, to find my YouTube page, to find my Facebook, my Instagram, all that stuff. Number 875. Excellent. I also have tons of posters and, and canvas prints and pillows and all sorts of stuff beyond our uh, expensive um, landscape paintings, right? Beyond all the original paintings, we have tons of posters and everything else. I just got to finish filling in the top up here. We get that bit of our canvas where our easel doesn't cover over. Everybody's got the same thing happening, you know what I mean? It's that bit that just doesn't get covered when you're painting it. So take it off and do a little surgery over the top. That's what I like to call it. Doing a little, little edging surgery. A little edging, guys. We're bringing ourselves to the edge and then stopping, and then we're coming over here 
And we're gonna edge this side just a little bit. It likes it like that. We're just gonna edge it. Just a, just a touch on the edge, just the edges. And we're gonna come back over here. Uh, I'm curious to know if anybody even knows what the hell I'm talking about. That's gonna be the funny thing. If you guys even understand why that, why it makes me laugh. Oh, that's so great. So great. I love that show. Okay, perfection. Gorgeous. Excellente. I love that. It's wicked cool. All right, let's finish washing off this brush. Everyone's gonna go follow Connor, of course, for naming this painting. That's how it happens around here. Paint with John. Sometimes we ask questions. Sometimes if you get follow, uh, if, you, if you name the painting, we get people to follow you, right? Whoever gets pinned, everybody goes and follows them because one day you might get pinned and then you're gonna want everybody to come follow you. So tip for tap works both ways. Two end street, double edged sword, right? So go follow anybody that I ever pin in the comments, go follow them. And then when it, when it comes time, right? And I pin someone else in the comments, that could be you, everyone's gonna come follow you. And that's how we do it around here, the Paint With Josh Show. The Paint With Josh Show. It's, it's one of my cleanest, my God, I, like normally I make a gigantic mess with all these colors on the brush and all these different things. And my, my paper towels look like a, like a, a, a rainbow Jackson Pollock by the time we get done with all these bits and just messy where I have to take the, the knife and just wipe it off. This is one of the cleanest ones we've ever done. There's like four little bits of black paint on the paper towel. That's it. That's it. Okay. All right. Now, if we want to come back and do one again later, then I suggest we stop now. So let's go over here. We're going to flip the camera around. I've already signed it. I've already signed it. Let's flip the camera and we're going to have to bring you guys down because it's way up here. Oh, who's that scary man in the back of my studio? Freaks me out every time I come back here. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's much better. Ooh, come over like this. There we go. Much darker. See those different tones, those shadows? And then these two just stand right out. Oh, got some on my lips. <laughs> so birds are there. They're up here flying underneath the canopy. And uh, like I said, this one is very bright. Wait till I post a picture of it over on Facebook and uh, you'll see how dark it actually is. It's super bright in these, uh, in my bright lights, which for some reason I just can't get the lighting figured out. Uh, it seems to change, you know, as the clouds move. I don't know why. Good morning from Greece. Welcome, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. We just finished this one, but uh, I plan on coming back and doing one later on. And I had an idea and now all of a sudden the idea is gone from my head. I have no idea what I was thinking of doing for the next painting. What was I going to do? I'm very confused now. Maybe I look around at all the other paintings in here and I was going to get an idea. Mm, was it the one with the crack? I don't know. I can't, I can't remember. I can't remember. Yes, black and white. Told you we'd get the black and white. There's lots of stuff we got to get to, right? This is one of the ones I've been waiting on to do. And I was, I was debating whether or not to do it on a white canvas or do it on a black canvas. Yeah, I'm going to do another one later on tonight. And um, ancient ruins would be very cool. That'd be cool. Thank you, Wanda. I love you. Let's see. Birch trees and cherry blossoms. That'd be cool. Covered bridge would be neat. That'd be neat. Do, did you do the lighthouse one? The Like the big one, the old? I haven't, I haven't covered over it yet. I haven't done the, the big lighthouse one, no. Um, we haven't done that one yet. I was waiting on getting some new black gesso delivered and it just came uh, yesterday. So I could probably try to cover over it and I just want to save that little lighthouse part and then redo the whole big canvas. So thank you, Linz. I appreciate that. Cosmic Lighthouse. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it's still over there. It's like I can see it. I'm it's behind the camera over there and uh, still the original scene, that original little lighthouse scene. So right now it's, uh, what, 8.40. 8.40. So I did this one about 40 minutes. No. Yeah, 8.40. That's what I thought. Mm. Ah. Awesome. <laughs> Awe and some. Very cool. Just can't stop looking at it. Put like a little Christmas ball, like a little bright red Christmas ball hanging off the bottom branch. Black and white with pink cherry blossoms. So then it's not black and white anymore. <laughs> it's just 
this with pink, right? Uh, here in Indiana, it's what, it's 840 in Indiana? There's no way. Oh, I was gonna say, you're not talking to me. <laughs> Paint the Milky Way in the galaxy with a supernova. <laughs> you freaking wicked cool. Uh, let's see, I've got a couple black canvases. I've got a couple big white canvases that I could turn into big black canvases. All depends though. I'm uh, I'm not feeling uh, too hot. I'm sort of on a like a downward spiral right now with painting sales, and this one didn't sell, so <laughs> I really don't want to come back and do this again. Um, I'm blasting through all of my supplies and not getting anything for it, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if we come back. Do a Halloween painting. Horses I wish I could do, but I'm not that good. I'm not that good to do a horse. Uh, at least I don't do animals. If I tried to do a horse, ask London, uh, it would not turn out very well. It would not turn out very well, but... I, uh, I count on these painting sales to pay the rent, guys, and all the lights and the phone bill and everything else. So, uh, you know, if you see one you like, make sure you get it. And uh, until I see you guys again next time, you know what? I've been thinking about doing a portal painting, actually. I, I've literally been thinking about doing a portal because it's been a while since we've done a portal painting. And uh, maybe we might just circle back around to the portals and we'll see. Who knows? Who knows? Apocalyptic cityscape would be cool. Definitely tag me. I'd love to see it or send it to me on Facebook or uh, Instagram or... You know, wherever. We've done plenty of volcanoes. You can go find my volcanoes over on my YouTube page. Done lots of those. So I figured we'd do something we've never done before. We've never done like a close-up forest scene. And uh, it turned out really good. I really like it. Really like it. So, we'll go hang it up in the gallery. All right, guys. Well, uh, I love you. And uh, Monument Mountain would be cool. You know what? Oh, you know what I've been thinking about doing was um, the Devil's Tower. Doing another version. I've done like five Devil's Tower paintings. So I haven't done one in like two, like two and a half years. But Devil's Tower would be cool on a black canvas at night. Like illuminate the whole background with some brightness and then put the Devil's Tower in. I don't know. Be kind of cool. The band played on. Oh, thank you, Anna. Yes, uh, those ones, uh, uh, even like the big one just recently, I just dropped it down to like 375, uh, it, which is a steal for that 24 by 30 inch canvas. It's ginormous. Um, and it's gorgeous and beautiful. And there's so much paint on it. I'm literally like staring at it in the hallway. It's uh, because I use so much for that bridge, the little ground bridge at the bottom. Wicked cool. I wish I could do Buddha. I, I can't do people. Um, it would be a travesty if I attempted to do Buddha or anyone else. Uh, very, yeah. Devil's Tower in a portal painting. That's a good idea right there. This is number 875. So, let's see. 375 is 3,000 for me? I don't understand. Yeah, number 875 for this painting. We've got 872, 3, 4, and 5 still available. So the last four paintings uh, have not sold during the live show, and that bums me out because I feel like you guys don't love me anymore. So it's all right. We'll try to, try to continue, try to keep painting, even though my audience hates me. It's fine. <laughs> Winter Wolves, UFO night scene. I've got one. I've got, I'm looking at one. I've got a wicked 16 by 40 inch UFO over a, a green ocean with a crash wave. Two UFOs, actually. So this one, I think it's 237. I think. It's like it's 40% off. Uh, I got to hang on. I'm going to find it. Get the old phone out. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's see. So if we go to view my shop, and then we're going to come over here, we're going to type in the word TikTok, right? Just type in TikTok and it'll pull up all the paintings that we've done on TikTok. I hate this little stupid thing. There we go, right? So all of these paintings we've done on TikTok. The only one that doesn't have a photo is this one that we haven't completed yet, right? Everything else has a picture attached with it. So there's about 12 to 15 paintings in here that we've done on TikTok that, uh, holy crap, eight, uh, three people have number 800 in their, pot, in their, in their <laughs> cart. We got a 784 in the cart. Those are the two oldest, 800 and 784, the two oldest paintings that we have. But if you go up here and you click on the one that doesn't have a photo, it's going to pull up this listing, and it says it's 396. But with the two, uh, with the 40 percent off, it brings it down to 237.60. So that's free worldwide shipping anywhere in the world. I have what over 875 sales on Etsy, some crazy number. Eight, or I can't even remember. <laughs> it's some monumental number for me. Let's see, dude, I feel you, I feel it. Mm. 
I feel you. This is my job. This is how I pay the rent, how I pay the internet bill, the Wi-Fi, phone bill. That's how I pay everything. So let's see. Does this, it does come with a frame option. So where's the, what do I do with this? What do I do with the frame? Mm, hang on. Let me duck in front of you. Hold on. Let's see. So we've got a, actually this, you know what? This gray wood frame, I don't know why I didn't list it. This would probably be the best. This would probably be the best one. So if you want to get this one and you click on a, a, I think I only have it listed as a brown frame option, but if you click on that option, then I'll give you this gray frame instead of the brown one or whichever one you choose. It's totally up to you. Just got to get it to come off of the old painting first. There we go. All right, get that guy out. And this little gray frame, right, would actually be pretty sweet. Pretty sweet, but the reason I don't have it listed is because it's kind of dinged up, you know what I mean? It's got a couple scratches and a couple nicks and stuff. It just kind of, it holds wet paintings and allows me to transport them easily without getting my fingers dirty, basically. You know what I mean? But I think this color, would probably be the best color frame to go with. It's like a, it's almost like a, like a grayish wood color. Kind of strange. So if you wanted the frame and you selected the brown wood frame option, but you wanted this one instead, like I said, it's, it's kind of scratched up. I can go get a new one. That's very much the same color. Uh, I just don't have it with me today. Uh, but the other brown one is in pristine condition. I just can't remember where the heck I put the dang thing. <laughs> I found it. It's attached to a painting that uh, that I also have available for sale in the store. All right, I want to show you guys this one too. This soft little sunsetty seascape that we did the other day. Look at that. Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Guys, that's a cool little one right there. Still nice and wet, that one. So this is the other brown frame right, that I have listed in my store. And we just did this uh, seascape painting, what, the other day, yesterday? Two days ago? No, yesterday, you know, on the 22nd. So, got that one, it's an 18 by 24, nice big painting. Uh, you can either have it with the frame or without the frame. We could take this frame and put it on this painting. All up to you, if you bought the painting, of course. So, in the meantime, I'm going to end the show and then we'll uh, go take a photo of this. Maybe put it inside that gray frame. How pretty would that look? How pretty would that look? If we put it inside there, let me just see. Let me see what we're looking at inside here. It always gives it such a, just another bit of depth when you add that frame to it. Just an extra piece of depth. There we go. Flip this little guy around. There we go. Perfection. Very cool. Yeah, look at that. Woo! Right? Just adds that one more little piece of depth action in there. It's kind of similar to the color of the actual canvas. That's, that's probably the best view of it, of its true color. You know what I mean? So, I agree. Very sharp. But this one is more of a uh, display-only kind of frame, as um, it's kind of scratched up. I don't know why it's all scratched up, but probably because I move it around so much. You know what I mean? Got to move it all over the place. Here we go. Now, stick this one inside here. Now I can transport it without having to worry about touching the wet edges. <laughs> oh, I'm ridiculous. Okay, well, I'm going to go uh, take this one and go hang it up on the wall so it can start its drying process. And in the meantime, I love you guys. And uh, black frame would be cool with this one, but I don't have a black frame to show currently. Um, I need to go make a run to Michael's, get some more frames, and then I would have some more frames to show. But uh, all my black, my black frames sold, the driftwood frames sold, the bigger frames sold. Uh, I, most of my 18 by 24 frames are gone. I only have this and my uh, little brown one that we've got. So let's see. Pop, 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 pop. So this one's really neat. But uh, yeah, until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day.
Epa bow! Get him out of here! It's over! I can't never hit the button on the right.